Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So in today's SNS video, I have a couple of shop projects that I'd like to get to, but my primary focus is I want to tell you all about this new to me stare at bench vise that I have, uh, how I got this, why I got it, and what we're going to be using it for. All right. Hopefully to have a, uh, just a fun SNS video for you for this week. Uh, to begin, I wanted to go ahead and announce to my uh, YouTube viewers out there that we have recently taken a trip up to the Ellis Derrick Company in Athol, Massachusetts. My wife, Abby, and I, we took a trip up there. Actually, it was in May that we went up to the Sterrett Company and was invited in with our camera so that we could visit their facility, their manufacturing facility there, and get some video to share with you on the channel, which we have done. So I've been working on those videos and I hope to be able to share them with you very soon. I just have to um, wait for everybody's approval on my edits and make sure that the videos are, are good to go before we publish them for everybody to see. But I am very excited to share those videos with you. It was such a wonderful experience being able to travel up to Massachusetts, which was my first time in the New England area. We, uh, we flew into Rhode Island um, and Abby and I got to enjoy a couple of places nearby, such as Mystic, Connecticut, and um, Massachusetts. We went into Athol and hung out with Sterrett for a couple of days, which was just wonderful. And then after that, we drove down to Boston for a couple of days and uh, got to see the sights around Boston, did the hop on, hop off bus, and ate some very, very delicious lobster rolls there and some clams and some oysters. We also got to uh, stop by and visit Keith Fenner at Turn Right Machine Works. We were uh, passing through and I wanted to be able to go by and visit him, so we did. I didn't get video with Keith, I just wanted to stop by and visit and say hello and see his new space there as well. So that was wonderful getting to see Keith as well. And then uh, we made our way back home. So we had a great time up in Massachusetts in that region there, and we're actually looking forward to future visits there as well. There are so many wonderful, awesome places to go and visit up there that we didn't have time to do, such as the American Precision Museum. And, you know, there's several museums there that we would like to go and visit on a future visit. So we went up there to uh, visit with Starrett and do the factory tour. Tim Cucci, he was our host for the video. Uh, he takes us through the entire plant and, uh, Whenever you guys see these videos, they're gonna be long run format videos because we spent two days touring and videoing the Sterrett Company, and that is a massive place. A massive place with a lot of history there and a lot of different areas that are manufacturing tools. Athol, Massachusetts, their factory there is where 90% of Sterrett tools are made still today. And we're going to get to share a lot of that with you. For example, their micrometers, their 120 calipers, their dial indicators, their test indicators. We got to see a lot of those tools being made and being uh, built and put together in the processes they use to build those tools. While we were there at Sterrett, I couldn't help but notice from the start of the tour all the way to the end, every area inside that place their factory had Sterrett bench vices everywhere. Every workstation, every department has beautiful Sterrett and Athol vices all throughout that place. Every workbench just about has one. So as we were walking through, I made a, I made a joke with Tim about, man, how cool would it be to have one of these Sterrett vices that Sterrett has used for all these years building their tools? And, and Tim said, I think I can hook you up. And he did. He took me to a little storage area uh, where they had, they had stored. They're, they're, they're always trying to improve their manufacturing processes and their work cells. So they've recently been working on the area where they, where they build the uh, one inch mics there, okay? And with this shuffling around and reorganizing move it, they had a lot of tools and things in a storage area. And Tim brought me in there and said, how about this guy right there? Do you like that? And I looked at it and I said, man, that is 
absolutely wonderful. That is the perfect size. That is, this is the perfect bench vise for use on an area like this, on a, on a, uh, a workbench, a toolbox, something that's not massive, not anything that's huge, but when you got small parts that you're dealing with that you want to clamp in a vise and do something with, this is a perfect size for that. So this is the Starrett 923. Let me turn it around here so you can see the, uh, the model number there on the casting. It's the 923. And you might notice something significant about this vise. That is the jaws right here, okay? Starrett built these custom swivel jaws for many of their vices to be used with the building of the micrometers, okay? So I'll go ahead and back this out a little bit. By the way, this vise is in beautiful condition. It's just got your grime on it from all of the decades of this being put to, put to work at Starrett, okay? But it's still tight, works good. They only used it for one thing, and that was to hold one inch micrometers. So you can see right here that on the dynamic jaw, you have a swivel jaw right here that pivots and then the back jaw is fixed, all right? And the way that these were used is that you would put the mic into the vise like this and that, would, that swivel jaw would allow it to line up on the body. Now you guys will get to see some of this in the factory tour video, but this is a way that they hold their mics when the craftsmen that are building these have to do some minor tweaking to align the spindle with the anvil down here, all right? And what they'll do is they'll clamp this in here like so, and they manipulate the body just ever so slightly to get that perfectly lined up where it needs to be. And then after they get it lined up to within a certain degree, then they go to a lapping machine where it actually laps these two faces perfectly parallel together. And as I said, you'll get to see that in the Starrett Factory Tour video. All right, so that is what the Starrett vise was used. But let me tell you what Tim had to say about this particular vise. I just got me some notes here um, because I wanted the story behind this actual vise here and how it was used, that kind of stuff, to share with you guys so that we, we would have a story that goes along with this vice. It's always great to know where the tools come from, right? So this is uh, Tim's email to me about this vice. He says, that particular vice was used in micrometer assembly for one inch mics when the spindle needed to be aligned to the anvil or the measuring faces needed to be parallel to one another. The frame would be placed in the swivel jaw, like I showed you there, the frame would be placed in the swivel vise to allow secure hold of the radius of the frame on the anvil end. We would bend or twist the frame to bring into alignment, that is the spindle diameter to anvil diameter, or parallel, which is the spindle face uh, to the anvil face. We now have implemented new processes where the frame does not need to be manipulated, hence no need for the vise. So, that vice was removed from service because they have uh, improved their manufacturing techniques on when they're building their one inch mics there. And so this was in their storage area. And uh, Tim said, I'm gonna send it down to you so you can have that. So thank you very much, Tim, for sending this to me. And of course, thank you everybody at Starrett for your generosity. I think this is really cool. And I honestly don't know if anybody else can say, that they have a Starrett vise built by Starrett that was used at the Starrett factory that helped build their precision tools. It's just an honor to be able to have a tool like that with so much history in this thing. I'm not even gonna clean it. It's gonna stay exactly like you see it and I'm gonna get it mounted onto the workbench and it'll be used whenever we need it, all right? So we'll go ahead and um, we'll, we'll get on to the, uh, the machining part of what we're gonna do for this week's episode. So what I'd like to do, I've got another steel plate there behind you on the forklift. And what I plan on doing is mounting this vise to the steel plate that's gonna go on top of the toolbox. Now, it's actually not gonna go on this one. I've got, the one that was here is the 55 inch roller cabinet, which is now inside the office room by the granite plate. 
And the reason I put it in there is because I needed another toolbox for some of my precision tools, but I also needed a place where I could stand up my taller tools, such as the height gauges and surface gauges. All right, so that's in there. That's what the plate is gonna go on, all right? I also have another steel plate that's gonna be for this. This is the 72 inch uh, toolbox, and I'm gonna be getting that up here as well, but we're gonna do that another time. Right now, we're just gonna focus on getting this vise mounted up, and let me show you how we're gonna do that. So this is just gonna be on the, the box that's already in the uh, office in there, but I wanna mount it on this corner here. Now the drawers will be here on this side, so this is you know the, the front working side. But we're just gonna mount it just like that to the corner on that steel plate. So this will be where it's positioned and used, and whenever I, when I'm not actually using it, we can loosen this up, the swivel, and I can basically just turn it out of the way like that because this is gonna be sort of a walkway where this toolbox is sitting. And so we'll have three holes. We'll get the plate drilled and tapped, get it bolted down. I'll just dress the bottom of the bolts flush with the bottom so that they're not sticking out. And that's where our new stair vise is gonna be mounted on the other toolbox. So let's get rolling on it. Thought I would go ahead and show you where it's gonna be so you guys can see this before we get going on it. So we've got our uh, beautiful stair granite plate in here. And this is what I wanted to do is add another toolbox in here to be able to help me store some of my precision tools because my Gerstner box, I was running out of room, didn't have place for all of my tools. So thought, let's just go ahead and add another toolbox in here. But I also, the reason why I wanted this is to have an area for our taller tools, such as our height gauges and our surface gauges and tools like that to build a set because these are harder to store unless you're laying them down in the toolbox, which is not what I want to do. So be able to store the taller tools here, have a workplace to set our tools on or work pieces while we're over here working on our granite plate there as well. All right, so this is the corner that I decided I want to uh, mount the new stair vise. So it'll be just like that. And then whenever we're not using it, we can just simply rotate it over here out of the way so that it's not really kind of sticking into this, you know, walk area right here. All right, so that's the plan. And I wanted to mention that, uh, so this was the 55 inch box that I had put out there in front of the lathe and, and had been using. I went back to Harbor Freight because I wanted to get another one of these boxes to use right here. This is the generation or second gen or series two box, uh, 55 inch that they are discontinuing. And I could not get another one of these boxes. My local Harbor Freights would not, they won't even order it. So whatever stock they have of those, they're just trying to sell those out because they're now trying to roll out the uh, Series 3 toolboxes. So since I couldn't get this one, I went ahead and ordered the 72-inch roller box to replace this to be used in the shop as a workbench and to hold the tools for the lathe and the mill there and decided just to put this guy in here in the office to use. So that's what we're doing there. All right. So... Let's go ahead and get our uh, steel plate out and uh, get, get our holes drilled and tapped. I'm ready to get this guy mounted up here permanently and have a, a more solid, durable work surface here on top of the toolbox. This is gonna be our steel top. I've already got it dressed on the sides and cleaned off a little bit of surface rust here and there. So this is, the, this is gonna be the front edge. This is where we'll mount our stair vise here. I've just got it turned backwards so I can uh, get a clamp here on this side. Real simple, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna eyeball lining up the edge here, down this side, right next to that radius, and then this front edge, so that it just looks kind of square. Just gotta have room for our transfer punch. I think that'll work right there, let's see if it's this one. I think that one might even work better right there. Just put this clamp on it, hold it in place. Okay.
This one behind it being a little tricky to get to. Always uh, good to put a circle around your punch marks so that you can easily see them. You're not having to search for them. And go back in there with a center punch. And wide them out a little bit. You guys remember this beast, don't you? My dad's Bucks mag drill. Had, a, had some people missing this one whenever I was using the, uh, the Evolution mag drill. But I had got the, the Evolution mag drill because it's such a light uh, drill that's easily, you can just easily pick it up one hand and put it on a beam, a uh, vertical. But um, this was really nice because it's a lot more heavy duty and you have reversing capability with the Black & Decker drill motor on this too as well. So we're gonna go in here with uh, 3 8, 16 tapped holes. So we'll be able to line up and just do a drill and power tap. Give you guys a little closer look. I don't know if I've shown the drill up close besides just drilling holes with it. So it's got a built-in receptacle on the back and one of one of the reasons to have that is so that you can take the drill motor and just plug it in there all right and there's your mag switch right there it's got a little light that you can still see that comes on and it's mag down Hoping that it'll just uh, mag itself good to the table through the steel plate here. I think it's going to be just fine where it's at. Plug our drill back in, and then yeah, you guys can see that. So forward. There's reverse. All right, we'll get her lined up. All right, this is a 60 degree center point that I always use in the, in the mill or a drill chuck to line up a punch mark or to line up a, a, a tap or a tap wrench or anything like that. Pulling it just a little bit. All right, we got it. We got it magged down there in the punch mark, so that's good. All right, we'll be going in there with a uh, 5 16 drill for uh, tap size and then a uh, 3 8 16 gun tap there to tap it. The back of the drill motor here has this little clip that Black & Decker put on there so that you can always keep your chuck key stored right there. It's always been important to always try to stick it back there every single time you use it so that it doesn't get lost. I use hearing protection whenever I run these drills just because you're usually really close to the motor and these things are pretty loud. So earplugs for me, and then we're gonna use our anchor lube for some uh, lubricant on both the drill and the tap there. These are nice because they got this little spout so that you can uh, just kind of Squirt out or dab a little that you need there, just like that.
Another thing that's nice about that anchor lube, it's just easy to clean up. It's not oily. It's a water-based lubricant, so it doesn't get oil all over this place. All right. Just bump it in. All right, that's all the way through. Reverse the motor. There we go. That's the feature that my Evolution drill is missing that I wish they would have on there is a, a reversing motor. Makes it so nice for power tapping in the field like this. Y'all can see how nice that feature is, that reversing feature on the motor for doing stuff like this. Really, really helps out. Got one more to drill and tap here and then this will be finished up. I will have to go down to the hardware store and get me the, the right link bolts that I need because you know how it is. They, every time you go to your bolt bin or your bucket or your box with hardware, you can't ever find the right size. All right, simple enough. Got those three done there. All we got left now is just to go get some bolts. The right length I need anyway. We'll get us some, uh, put in our chuck key back up here in the top. Close up our anchor lube because it'll dry out on the tip there if you don't close it up. we go. I do have a 3 8 bolt here that we'll use to just make sure. Perfect. All right. So you can see how handy it is to have this old Bucks mag drill. It works excellent. Another tool that was passed down to me by my dad and my granddad. What I usually do is just take a cord here and just kind of wind it up like this. Same thing with the drill motor cord. I just wind it up like that and that's it. The downfall of this thing is that it's 
pretty heavy. They got these handles in here, but it does have some gravity to it, but it's an awesome tool to have. You just take this Noga deburring tool to uh, deburr the top edge of the hole. The bottom I'm not worried about because we're going to run the bolts through with the vice uh, base there. And then I'm going to take the grinder, just grind the bottom flush. All right. So our holes are lining up nicely. I'll go, go get some bolts and we'll get this thing mounted down. All right, we got our bolts. Went down to the local hardware store. <clears throat> Went ahead and just got stainless because they have them and just dressed it up a little bit. So it looks like our hole pattern's lining up just fine. So these were one inch length. I can feel just a little bit sticking down, maybe about an eighth of an inch or so. So I'm gonna flip this thing up so that we can um, <clears throat> just dress that. We'll just take our flap wheel and grind the bottom off uh, flush. Just got it flipped upside down, dress the bolts off. I think we're about ready to go get this mounted onto the uh, the toolbox now. I gave this one a little bit more loose tolerance. Uh, Joe sheared this up for me over at the welding shop. Last time I had to grind a little off one end because I was trying to, I was trying to give it a machinist fit. So that worked out. That worked out better right there. Now I do have the uh, rubber mat that came with the box. We'll put that back up on here. I'll have to trim it probably for the where the vise is going to sit. go it's tapered about an eighth of an inch it was about an eighth inch narrow on that one side there but no big deal so probably what I'll do is just go ahead and set the vise here and just uh, trace this out with the uh, razor knife to uh, cut that off <laughs> had it setting on there wrong didn't I every time you think you're gonna do something right you end up screwing it up it ain't too bad just this one front corner is all we'll just retrim this again another dumb mistake there we go okay There it is, I think it's ready to mount, just that one little spot right there that's, that's cut out, because I, <laughs> I wasn't thinking about how the base plate was oriented. But that's gonna be just fine. We're about ready to get this guy finished up here.
There we go. Man, that is, that is just awesome. All right, that is finished up. We're all mounted up and ready to go and excited to uh, finally have this guy mounted and ready to use whenever we need it. It's such a cool historical tool with uh, significance there directly related to Starrett. All those years or decades that it was in their plant being used to help build their precision tools. So I'm uh, very proud and very thankful to be able to uh, own this. I just really appreciate Tim and everybody at Starrett uh, willing to give me one of their vices there. So you guys will have to uh, keep an eye on the channel. We've got that factory tour video coming pretty soon. And I'm looking forward to sharing it with you and showing you all of the tools that we got to see Starrett build whenever we're there, we were there in Athol. All right, so uh, moving back on to the, uh, the toolbox here. I like adding these uh, quarter inch thick steel plates to the top of this. It adds a little bit of weight to the box there. But the other, the main benefit of that, not only is it add a little bit of weight, it adds rigidity to the top here because the top of the box there is just a sheet metal. So it flexes if you're pushing on it or putting things on there because it's really intended just to be used as a, as a top to set the other toolbox on. But you can certainly put a work bitch on there. You can put your butcher block on there if you want, whatever, whatever you want to do. But this is going to be nice and uh, steady now so that we can take our taller tools like this Starrett height gauge right here. This is one of the, uh, the newer digital height gauges. And I can put these guys up there. Now we've got a nice solid base and it's not rocking around on that sheet metal. One of my classic Starrett bases right here that I restored. Go ahead and get the rest of these tools over here on the box and get this uh, job finished up. All right, guys, this job's finished up. This is what I wanted to do right here. We've got a nice firm uh, top for all of our heavier precision tools to stand up on. And this is ready to go. This is my Starrett mic set right here, the 436 uh, set of mics from uh, zero to six inches. So, you know, the case itself takes up a lot of room. So I like having them right there on top of the toolbox. And whenever I use them out there in the shop, I just come in here and just grab them out of the case. And then the uh, vice, as I was saying, when I'm not using it, we'll probably just keep it um, swiveled around to, in this orientation right there and be out of the way. It still looks good like that too, though. So there's a little shop project I've been wanting to tackle and uh, get done. And I had, a, I had fun sharing it with you using the old Bucks mag drill and, of course, putting our beautiful stare at vice to work here in the shop.
Well, there's our Rockford Open Side Shaper. It's uh, it's going to its new home. That's uh, that's Andrew up there who who wanted to uh, purchase it. He's getting her strapped and chained down now. So interesting uh, destination that the Rockford's going to be going to. He is going to be taking it up to North Dakota, and then from North Dakota, it's going to go all the way to Alaska, where he is going to be. Uh, he is building a shop up in Alaska. And he's been acquiring some machinery like this so that he'll have him a nice machine shop up there once he gets his shop built. So pretty interesting, uh, the destination that this uh, machine is about to go on. <clears throat> but I'm glad that it's going to a good home and he is going to have it and be able to put it to work whenever the time comes. So it'll have a safe journey from here uh, up to North Dakota. He says he'll store it there until he uh, gets his shop finished up there in Alaska.